What's going on guys? Ed here. Welcome back. Today I pose an important question. Why is there no oral testosterone? Or if there is, why don't we hear about it? I'm here to answer your questions, all that you want to know before we get started. As always, I'm not a doctor. This is for entertainment purposes. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, drop them below in the comment section. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing with a friend. We got to get this information out there. People need to know this. It's important. Anyway, let's get started. We're going to touch on today the differences between oral and injectable testosterone. Yes, oral testosterone does exist. It's just not talked about as much. So uh, let's get into it. I found this study that compares injectable with oral testosterone. Um, today, we're specifically going to be talking about the oral testosterone, which is testosterone undecanoate. It is not 17-alpha alkylated um, like many of your oral steroids are, such as D-ball, Anadrol, Winstrol. The 17-alpha alkylated steroids are the ones that are designed to pass through your liver, so they cause a lot of liver damage. Testosterone undecanoate is not 17-alpha alkylated. There was a methyl testosterone, which was 17-alpha alkylated, but that got phased out in the late 1970s with the introduction of testosterone undecanoate oral version. So, let's dive into it. The study starts out talking about injectable testosterone, the tried and true, what we know. And I'm just going to compare the results of what happened in this study um, for injections versus oral so we can get an idea of is one more effective than the other? Does one work better than the other? What are the advantages, disadvantages, and so on? So, beginning with the injectable testosterone, there was this study that showed um, 100 milligrams of testosterone and then they give an intramuscularly weekly brought testosterone levels from 72 nanograms per deciliter on average in the treatment group. After 10 weeks, it was up at 767 nanograms per deciliter uh, on average. That's total test and free test increased from about 19 picograms per milliliter to 69 picograms per milliliter. So, pretty big increase there, only taking 100 milligrams a week Test levels rose on average from 70 to 770, and the free test rose from about 20 to 70. Huge increase from not a lot of testosterone. Your typical TRT replacement dose is going to be anywhere around 100, 150 milligrams of testosterone per week. In a separate study done over 16 years, actually, they analyzed bone mineral density, um, but just starting out in the first year alone from injectable testosterone and then they, they found that bone mineral density increased from about 92 to 120 milligrams per centimeter cubed. So in the span of one year's time, you get about a 20-25% increase in bone mineral density. Pretty cool! As always, we know testosterone comes with side effects. Um, there is a correlation between having high testosterone levels and high hemoglobin. Um, that's why when we take testosterone, whether it's TRT or full-on anabolic steroid cycles, you got to watch your, uh, your red blood cell count, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit. You don't want that blood to get too thick, so they tell you to donate blood pretty often. So there's that. Um, now let's compare this uh, little study here with oral testosterone. Like I said, we're talking about testosterone undecanoate. came around in the late 1970s. Um, and they did a study with a treatment group receiving 120 to 160 milligrams of testosterone undecanoate daily. So there's the difference there where in injectable, you're going to get about 100 to 150 milligrams per week TRT dose. With oral testosterone undecanoate, you're getting that daily. So it's a lot more testosterone to take. Anyway, how does it work? Well, this study found out that before testosterone therapy, uh, the group baseline was at about 230 nanograms per deciliter on average. And after the study, they were up at about 400 nanograms per deciliter average. So pretty big increase. Um, they went from about 200 to 400 which 
is a very substantial increase. It's not small, but they were taking 120 to 160 milligrams of testosterone oral daily. And we saw a much bigger increase of 100 milligrams of testosterone injectable weekly. So a whole lot less testosterone going a whole lot longer way with the injectable. Let's see, we also saw free testosterone increase in the oral group on average from 30 picograms per milliliter to 62 picograms per milliliter. So yeah, that's a substantial increase, um, pretty solid stuff there. In a separate study, we see a dose dependent increase in lean body mass and decrease in lean body fat. Um, taken at 160 milligrams a day, oral testosterone under can weight resulted in a 1.3 kilogram increase in lean body mass. 240 milligrams a day resulted in an increase of 1.7 kilograms of lean body mass, while body fat mass was reduced by 1.4 and 1.2 kilograms, respectfully. That's after a 12-month treatment with 160 and 240 milligrams per day of testosterone under canoate. They pulled the group. They said that the guys who were taking oral testosterone under canoate, they noticed uh, increased libido, decreased ED, significant decrease in nervousness, depression, increased appetite, increased memory, concentration. So all that stuff that you get from injectable testosterone, you get the same effect when you take it orally. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, it is not liver toxic because it is not 17 alpha alkylated methyl testosterone was but we don't use that anymore now that we have oral testosterone undecanoate as far as side effects um it doesn't look like there was much change in liver enzymes ast and alt didn't change much there was no abnormal elevation of your psa prostate specific antigen um, but they did see reports of gastrointestinal intolerance because you take it orally. Some people are going to get side effects where their tummy hurts. No duh. Um, increased hematocrit, increased hypertension, decreased HDL, which is your good cholesterol. Again, all the same side effects that you get with injectable, you're going to get with the oral here, it seems. So oral does the same shit that the injectable does. So why aren't we using it? To be honest, I don't really know. Um, I guess just that the oral on the canoid happened to come around a little bit later. There's not as much research and studies done on it. And I suppose it would get expensive considering you're taking, you know, what would be a weekly dose injectable. You're taking that daily if you're going the oral route. So there's that. It seems like a lot of the information we have on the oral testosterone under weight is more recent. Um, there's just not a lot of research-backed evidence supporting this. So it looks like there is starting to be a lot more. A lot of people are doing some studies on it now, and this just might be the future. Uh, who knows? So, yeah, I, I got to do a little deeper dive in this because I'm kind of interested now. Um, I think this, you know, could be a good route to go, but you got to keep up with daily um supplementation even twice a day because the half life is short when you take it orally so there you have it i'm not advising that you try and take oral testosterone under can weight at all um like i said there's not a lot of research about it i would much rather stick with the injectable for now until we have more information on the oral but it looks very promising so I would love to uh, find some more information about this. I just uh, found a couple papers that I read over, thought it was interesting, figured I'd share it with you guys. Let me know your thoughts on it. With that, that's all I got. If you got any questions, let me know. Ed out. Thank you for watching. Until next time.